Welcome to HDTV. You're now rocking with your boy. How Falcon and Winter Soldier's finale sets up Don Cheeto's Armor Wars Disney Plus show. The ending of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, or as we call it, Captain America and the Winter Soldier, left fans with numerous loose ends to set the stage for the future of the MCU. And it's clear that Sam and Bucky's story isn't over. The series creator Malcolm Spellman is currently writing a fourth Captain America movie that will presum presumably feature Sam Wilson in the titular, the titular role, this time instead of Steve. Marvel Studios has, for the most part, cautiously avoided any questions regarding second seasons to any of its Disney Plus projects, and so far it seems most will be one and done. Based on what's been seen with the Falcon and the Winter Soldier and WandaVision, the studio will mainly use it to show use its shows to set up other projects to come down the line. Instead of telling multi-season stories, Prior to the release of the Disney Plus series, showrunner Malcolm Spellman confirmed the story will continue at least three future Marvel Studios projects. After watching the concluding installment, it wasn't exactly apparently what these projects are. However, there are some clear links to the Don Cheadle-led Armor Wars that will release next year. Is the power broker the Armor Wars villain? These are questions. It's not exactly a surprise to see the Falcon and the Winter Soldier setting the stage for Armor Wars, as in many ways the two are very similar. The most recent Disney Plus epic explored the legacy of Captain America and his shield. Meanwhile, War Machine's solo outing is set to dive into the legacy of Tony Stark and his technology. As was theorized by many, this week's concluding episode reveals Sharon Carter as the power broker crime boss of Madripoor. It's believed the former spy took up the position after the blip. Having spent years on the run for going rogue and helping Steve Rogers' team in Captain America's Civil War, however, in a game-changing post credit scene, Carter was pardoned and returned to her role in the CIA. Immediately after her pardon, Carter made a call to an unknown recipient to tell them that they're about to have full access to government secrets and prototypes, prototype weapons. Based on Sharon's villainous phone call, it seemed as if the person she was speaking to was either a partner or someone she's working for. As of now, there aren't any obvious clues as to who was on the other end of the line, but whoever it is could be the main antagonist of Armor Wars since it's unlikely the power broker herself would be. Some have speculated that the Iron Man 2's Justin Hammer could be involved in the series as he had a strong interest in replicating Stark technology in his debut appearance. If this is the case, this could very well be who Carter was in contact with in the recent post credit scene. Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige has previously explained that Armor Wars will see Tony Stark's biggest fear come true as his legendary technology falls into the wrong hands. This could indicate Sharon may return in Rhodey's solo outing as she gains access to Tony Stark's technology through her high-ranking government position. It's a logical assumption that after Tony's death, his remaining suits and advanced technology may have fallen into government hands. As Stark has signed the Sokovia Accords in Captain America's Civil War, it's likely the Accords made any of a fallen hero's equipment property of the government to ensure it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Don Cheadle's Colonel James Rose even appeared in the first episode of the series for a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Sam. However, he sadly never suited up into his iconic armor. The brief cameo made it clear he and Sam have kept in touch since their Avenger Endgame team-up, potentially leaving the doors open for the new Captain America to have his own cameo next year. Additionally, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier set up jo Joaquin Torres, I mean Joaquin jo Torres to be the MCU's hold on. Yeah, to be the MCU's next Falcon now that Sam has officially become Captain America. Much like Rhodey, Torres is a high ranking member of the US Air Force so it would make sense if the two had met at some point 
this could make Armor Wars a perfect place for Torres to return and finally don the iconic wings. What will Captain America 4 be about? Given the recent report of a fourth Captain America movie, presumably centering around Sam Wilson in the titular role, this is clearly one of the three connections Spellman was referencing. What exactly the plot could be is incredibly hard to predict as the film is likely at least three years away still. And Sam Wilson will probably return in, in at least a few more projects before that point. Phage has previously revealed Marvel's Disney Plus series will tie directly into the theatrical release. However, it's yet to be seen exactly how essential viewing they will be. With 24 films and two shows already existing in the MCU, it's becoming increasingly difficult for casual fans to avoid being left behind. Assuming Captain America 4 acts as a direct sequel to The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, it will likely continue Sharon Carter's villainous arc. Additionally, it will likely see the return of John Walker's U.S. agent, now working for Julia Louise Dreyfus, Valentina Allegra de Fontaine. Given neither of those plot points seem to have the steam to carry an entire film, it's likely another major Captain America villain will be introduced to serve as the main antagonist. Has the secret invasion already begun? The Samuel Jackson-led secret invasion series is set to release on Disney Plus next year. And it seems Marvel is setting the stage for the major event. In the comics, the scroll centric crossover is one of the biggest in history as many of the biggest characters were revealed as alien imposters. Many of the MCU's latest projects have included scroll reveals ever since Nick Fury and Maria, Mariah Hill were revealed to be impersonated by Talos and Soren in Spider-Man Far From Home. Following this, a scroll appeared in the ending of WandaVision to contact Monica Rambeau, and now another scroll has been spotted in the Loki trailer suggesting they will pop up there too. This will make the Falcon and the Winter Soldier the only Marvel project out of four to not involve the scroll, so it stands to reason that perhaps one of his characters could be a scroll imposter. In the Marvel comic version of Secret Invasion, Dreyfus' character Valentina is one of the first characters to be revealed as a scroll imposter. Given it's believed she will have a substantial role in the future of the MCU, a similar reveal could be prepared for the next year's Disney Plus event. While some believe Sharon's villainous turn is due to a scroll imposter, however, she clearly has enough motivation for a criminal downturn. After how many years spent on the run for her heroic action, and five years spent blipped, it makes sense why she would be fed up with the world. Are there any spinoffs on the way? John Walker's Captain America turned U.S. agent saw a major redemption arc by the end of the series as he accepted he wasn't the right person to carry the legendary mantle. However, opted to be a hero anyway. While he was initially established as an antagonist, throughout the finale, he joined Sam and Bucky in the fight against the Flag Smashers as a hero in his own right. Wyatt Russell's performance has been praised by many fans, leading some to call for a U.S. agent Disney Plus series to further explore Walker and Valentina. It'd be particularly exciting to learn more about Walker's custom-made shield, as it's still unclear what metal it could be made of. Additionally, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier began to establish the various members of the Thunderbolts, potentially setting up the team to unite down the line. Some common members include Baron Zemo, Batric, Taxmaster, and Abomination, all of which will appear at some point in Phase 4. Whenever the team eventually is assembles, John Walker could make the perfect character to lead the team, given his new heroic nature and military leading experience. All six episodes of The Falcon and Winter Soldier are streaming now, exclusively on Disney+. Plus. So, what do you guys think? Will this set up Don Cheeto's Armor Wars? And are you excited to hear that we're going to have an Iron Man comeback? Which, you know, isn't Iron Man itself. It's going to be War Machine. But do you feel this is going to be great? Do you feel this is going to be something to anticipate? I think so. I think this time around they'll get out they'll get um iron man right 
But in this case, I think it's not Iron Man. I think it's War Machine. And plus, the Armor Wars could really be good. It could show us what Don Cheadle's been up to. His character has been up to during the years he's came back from the blip and um, what he's been doing behind doors and clean. And then plus, we can see Pepper Potts, most likely, and Tony Stark's daughter. We probably could see him training her to be the next Iron Man. We don't know. Or Pepper Potts could be Iron Man or Iron Woman now. So we don't know what's going to happen, but that'll be a great story to watch. Um, for what it was worth, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier was great. I gave it a three and a half out of four stars um, for the whole series because they only had six episodes to work with. And for what they worked with, it was great. The only reason why it wasn't a classic is because that last episode, I gave it three stars, um, two and a half or three stars, I believe it was. I believe Sino did his review <laughs> and Sino basically said two and a half for that, that um finale and that it was. And I said it in my review as well and I agree with Sino. Um, shout out to the Screen Fiend, sir, and the One Crack News and the Patreon. I was on the Patreon today, man. Keep doing your thing, my brother. Is giving us all the info. And make sure you go to Carcino for Life. But um, I agree with um Sino and what he said. Um, if the flag smashers were very forgettable. And to me, I didn't like the Sharon being the power broker. To me, that was very lazy writing. Um, I wanted to see something else, but she was talking to somebody on the phone. So that could mess around and be her boss or somebody who she's working with. That's a good little twist, but um, I can't wait to the Captain America four movie. I think that's going to be great. We're going to see Sam and the Winter Soldier do their thing. And um, I can't wait to Loki. Loki's going to be off the chain. I can't wait for it. That's all I've been waiting for. But it's going to be six episodes, just like the Falcon and Winter Soldier. That sucks for me, but I felt it should have got 10 episodes. So did the Falcon and Winter Soldier should have got 10, but we know why they didn't get 10. But they gave WandaVision 10. But, um, yeah. And the scrolls, do you? I think the scrolls might, um, be all up in this, son, because they were in WandaVision. So I could. Definitely see them being in the next stuff. And is Sharon going to be the villain in um the wars, in the armor wars with um War Machine? I mean, it could happen. I think so. I think that'll be good. Um, to expand on her and whoever she's working with to go in that, or we could use another um villain. So let me know in the comment section what you think about um, Armor Wars. I think it's going to be great to see War Machine. I felt like they didn't give War Machine his due in the Iron Man movies. To me, he didn't get enough look at. Like, they didn't really feature him a lot. And that sucks for me. I wanted to see him in action like he was in Avengers Endgame. So, um... Thank you for listening. Like, comment, subscribe. Share this and hit the notification bell to select all to receive notifications. And if you like what you hear, you can donate to the page by cash apping me at the word welcome, the number two, and then HDII TV. Thank you for listening, and we are out. Daisy!